currently have a stack and a bit on the east in Collingsburg in East Prussia. We managed to destroy a Russian full stack in the last episode, and they're slowly just drip-feeding military forces and assets over there. Most of the German Empire's battalions, divisions, and armies are occupied on the Western Front, where there are full, full stacks in operation. Unfortunately, we've had a huge rebellion here, which is annoying, as we look to push to have the Siege of Reims, which is going to make us just that one step closer to taking Paris but yeah at the moment I would say that the balance of power for this war is going in favor of the central powers compared to that of the Allies okay we're gonna have to move this artillery up here because that army actually couldn't take Reims by itself which is annoying but anyway we'll fight this one the Battle of Reims it's gonna be another big one so far, we've destroyed two French full stacks. So technically, we've been intercepted here. So it's not going to be um, the siege. All right, I guess it's the an open field battle of Reims. But you know, it looks like we're actually besieging it there, technically, I guess. But anyway... Let's get things underway. So, so far for this series, we've been using our superior German firepower and hopefully we continue to use it and continue to get more winning results and continue on with winning ways all right this is movie here looking at the topography of this battle map nice and flat which is exactly what we want and we should be able to absolutely rain hellfire down upon the French Cavalry-wise, looking quite thin and green around the gills. My cavalry has been destroyed in this campaign. <laughs> you just don't really need it. Oh, no, why are you moving back? Ah! Oh, fire. I've got to be careful here. Might be a little bit of friendly fire. But I've been thoroughly enjoying the Great War mod. Testing on through. We're going from... I'd essentially say a mostly mobile army doctrine while focusing on superior artillery and firepower support against the French. We're digging in in the trenches and we're basically just using our firepower to win these battles in the early game. Once we sort of make our way to the mid, we're going to be able to get better quality artillery, heavier mortars, heavier guns, which would be awesome. There's Reims in the background. But the French seem to be advancing. And we're continuing to shell upon their position. They do have some of their own artillery. As shell and shrapnel and debris goes flying through a man and a horse there. Oh my god. My god! We're doing so well. So once we get to the mid game, we're going to be able to get barbed wire trenches. We might even get access to very early and light tanks, which I can't wait. And then we get you know, flamethrowers and gas sort of towards the end. And then the heavier battle tanks. So let me know in the comments, guys. Tips and tricks. Great war mod connoisseurs. I'd like to know your feedback and suggestions. And also, this Germany campaign will end in the future at some point. With either the destruction and <laughs> defeat of the Central Powers and abdication of the Kaiser. I hope not. Or it's going to end in a Central Powers victory. And we'll need to start a new campaign. So let me know. Should I play as Britain on this brand new version, 6.0? It's been a while. Um, my last series I did on this was like six, seven years ago, whatever. Um, that was with Britain. So maybe I should play someone else. Maybe play as France. Try to defend liberty, democracy, and freedom. Or maybe we could, I don't know, go full-blown monarchist and join the Kaiser. Bring back Napoleon. Maybe play as the Italians. Try to reinvigorate and bring back the fascismo <laughs> Italian Roman war machine. Or maybe play as the Austro-Hungarians. That'd be quite fun. As my grandfather was born in Austria. 
I did play. Last time I played Austria was Empire, and that was a lot of fun. Essentially, just trying to. I remember that campaign. Like, trying to adopt Germany's colonial policies. Like they had in. Uh, the Belgian Congo, sort of, sort of down that way and around the world and stuff. But do it with Austria <laughs> and try and get their own. I believe it took Texas. Austin, Te like, it was like Austrian, we called it like Austria, Texas, get it? <laughs> Austin, Texas. God, that was stupidly funny. <laughs> but so far, absolute carnage is happening in this battle as the French are slowly but surely pushing up and looks like we're trading rifle fire as well with the French infantry coming up against ours but thanks with artillery support and our own infantry we're smashing our way on in but yeah let me know tips and tricks and strategy I'd really much appreciate it because I do want to sink my teeth in it and dive into a lot of campaigns on this because I'm just having so much fun like it's so enjoyable so far but maybe feedback and suggestions are more quite spe specific to the faction as well could play as the Ottomans that might be quite fun to be fair it actually might be quite hard to play as them because they're not as big as you'd think because they're kind of like they're Middle Eastern and sort of so, like Ankara is quite small in this. Like I'm pretty sure Greece is independent. You'd really have to push up towards the Balkans. You might even need to push up into the Crimea as well. But so far, basically bringing the AI that I've noticed, particularly against the French here, they've only seemed to bring four, maximum five artillery pieces per army. So if you have your main assault army, which does the attacks and pushes on the offensive, if you can get that above five, you're laughing, particularly with the range, which is crazy in this mod, and with the firepower and reloading, and with unlimited ammunition, you will win by just a sheer matter of attrition over time. Like, our guns will outshoot you and blast you away. And then if you rush at our infantry, you're just going to get trashed. But just speeding things up here now. Not the most tactically difficult battle. There's been very few chances we've had to pivot and rotate. But this is trench warfare in World War One. Not the most crazy. So sort of sit back and just bombing. But we're doing well. Now, what's a massive problem for the French here? Is they're just getting obliterated in no man's land here. Oh my god. <laughs> we're just shredding them through. Yeah, because of the reinforcements, they're coming in one at a time, which is just not helping them. Oh my god, look at the absolute craters here on the battlefield. We've got... <laughs> The, f the surface of the moon here in uh, France. But so far, we're doing quite well. We're being hyper aggressive on the Western Front. This will be the third and f uh, yeah, the third French full stack being destroyed. You gotta give it to the French. They do have the man, like, they've got a decent amount of manpower matching with the Germans. Just tactically, we're beating them. We're taking our time, we're being slow and methodical on the battlefield but getting into the positions we're blitzkrieging the territory Brussels has fallen to the Germans thanks to the famed Schlieffen plan and we are really taking our time in Russia we only fought one full stack at Collingsburg but I would imagine that there's going to be more fierce fighting and resistance over there. As they seem to want to take and control East Prussia. And, well, I guess, unite the ushers. <laughs> Russia, Prussia, get it? Alright, we're just smashing the French here. 
We're just out shooting them, coming in one at a time. And then we're going to be able to capture Reams. Fantastic, General Staff. Another good and decent victory. Okay, we might need to advance here now, actually. Because they're, set, they're actually out of range. Look, you know what? We've been sitting back quite a bit. We've played like four battles in the last episode. I think we'll march up here because looking at the terrain here, there's a bit of a funnel here and there's some elevated high ground. I want to see how our German infantry do on the open battlefield. Because what we're going to have to do is we're actually going to have to move our arty because they've actually caught it on here, which is quite smart. They've stopped sending forces into that no man's land. So I might have to t send my cavalry to that position. We're going to advance. So this is actually turning into a second battle here. We're going to have to get that artillery attached back on to the horse and cart and then move on up. And now we're actually caught here. So we might actually lose a bit of casualties here as we push because they are actually defending against us now as we look to move and rotate. That's interesting that they've decided to pit, like be hit in there. Oh my god, my infantry is getting shelled to buggery here. Because normally, like, in a World War One game, we would be traversing the trenches and not being so up on the top of the open field. But I would imagine it would be nigh impossible to have trenches like scattered throughout. Okay, so they've actually responded here by moving up some infantry. Now, this is going to be tough because we've actually got no support, so we're actually going to have to try and face them. Shooting them from multiple vectors of attack is probably the play. Come on, German infantry. You just need to hold that a little bit longer before we get artillery support. But the French, oh my god, are actually smashing us here. We have managed to snipe an enemy general, which is awesome. But you got to give it to the French here. They know if they lose Reims, this will be their first piece of territory loss to the Germans. And then Paris. And Paris will potentially fall in only a matter of time. But I think we're just getting the angles on them here. We're losing a bit just because we're standing so close to potential artillery bombardments. But, oh my god, even like the trash tier, like tier 1 infantry is good. Well, I wouldn't even say it's trash tier. What you would consider trash tier in Total War, like early on, like in um, other Total Wars, is, is actually not too bad. Like all the units are really quite strong in the Great War mod. Alright, we're advancing here. But we're taking pretty significant losses. And it looks like we're going to lose one German infantry unit here. One's falling. And we might even lose a second as the cavalry comes on in. Oh, they're retreating there. Pushing up to that position has been quite costly. We are now in artillery range. Not all of them are there perfectly in a line, but we'll quickly get them ready just to bomb into that forest, set a waypoint, and just absolutely hammer anything that comes out of that forest. Because that's where the last of the French resistance are. Yeah, okay, boys. Start absolutely rain and hellfire, fellas. That's what we want to see. Alright, make sure you're on limber. There we go. Alright, fire into that. And that should turn the tide of this last little offensive. So we won the first battle here, but we actually managed to sustain some serious losses and casualties as we, as we advance. So, even if you guys wanted to see a more mobile infantry moving and advancing and progressing German army, like trying to make it more like a... Trying to adopt even like Napoleon line battle tactics doesn't seem to be working in this mod. <laughs> because if you get caught, you just trade so hard. Like, we've lost a lot of infantry here. What's really making the difference is who has the artillery firepower. 31st Infantry here against the French. The infantry are just trading back and forth. 
but it's the artillery it's making the difference oh my god this has been one of my favorite battles of the series so far it's divulged into two conflicts really the first initial wave and then this secondary French forest defensive hmm it's also just a really good example of how fallible we are if we don't have artillery pieces. So really, I'm going to need it to be imperative that we get artillery. Prioritize that over everything. It's just so, so valuable. Although we do have a bunch of pre-army builds that we started the campaign with that were generated, which are mostly infantry. So yeah... I guess we just need to focus on getting the coin and, and money to get artillery pieces and basically just trying to protect it as well as best we can. Alright. So even with artillery support, we're still struggling to get clean and concise shots at the last of the French here in the forest. I think that actually might be used, might be due to... Just the amount of foliage and protection they've had in there. Because we we've actually had, had to advance our infantry through the tree line to win that one. Feed the guns with war bonds and the help to end the war. Ammunition. I need ammunition. I don't need a ride. <laughs> what a great quote. Anyway. Great victory. And we should be able to march into Reims with impunity. The field guns... Picking up most of the kills, as always. Okay, so... We will need to address the Belgium Rebellion. And we've got two other armies here. So I do want to try and officially take Reims. Now, movement can be an issue with artillery. Like, hang on. There should be a... Gen hang on. There should be a cavalry or a general unit here that can actually take it. There we go. That'll do, I guess. All right, victory. All right, let's move you back to Brussels. Um, might just need to protect the general here. Maybe move him to the port or something. There we go. Just need to watch out for that. Yeah, so even though we won there again, it's just these interceptions that we're taking advantage of. Come on, who's got movement? One of you must have. I want to officially walk and march into Reims. Maybe you have a movement? Like, there's a move. I don't know why. It's like... There we go. There was a fair few units that have movement there. They just couldn't go on in. Alright, and we can't liberate or vassalize Reims, but we'll occupy it. Now, this is our first um, piece of territory in France. I am curious if they want peace. No. I think it's just two historical grievances that they're just never going to accept any of the major powers. Obviously, in total war, if you win a couple battles against a faction, quite often they want peace. But I think, because I went with historical AI focuses, um, that's not going to be necessarily the case. Uh, during the intern phase, Russia has moved up more military forces to East Prussia. But a hell of a fight going in France. We've nearly had to destroy, what, 10,000 Frenchmen? To take Reims. <laughs> They've got most of their... They had most of their military forces there. And to conquer the settlement, it's been... Well, easier said than done. Alright. Oh, they actually come in here. Oh my god, that's an insane army. What? Oh, we're not going to win that. We've got no artillery. They have four mortars. But that's still better than nothing. Yeah, that's what annoys me. The only thing about the Great War mod is you do have to be a little bit slow in your advancement like that. Uh, we really should have waited in Belgium. Now oh, we've lost it instantly, which is annoying. Like, I have no problem with rebellions happening. But when the rebellion spawns better quality equipment and infantry than the faction actually has before, that's my problem. 
with it. It's just due to the the religious problems of instability, so you do have to turtle quite a bit. Anyway, um, let's get rid of this Russian force here that's besieging East Prussia. So, so far, we've actually been a little bit on the defensive here on the Eastern Front. We've destroyed a full stack. Now we've got to deal with the secondary one. I wonder if the Ruskies will give us more of a fight than the French. Um, advancing up a bit. Why is the battlefield tilted like this? That's alright. But most fierce fighting is happening on the west in theatre. While things are starting to, well, hotten up, let's say, in the cold north. But yeah, I do believe, yeah, maybe we can't super peace with the Allied powers due to the historical thing we clicked on. Which is kind of annoying that it's full-on brick diplomacy. But I guess it's kind of realistic. You want it to be the full-scale of World War One, but in the same boat. The Germans bloody lost. <laughs> so we don't want to repeat history. That's not the point of this sandbox Germany campaign. We want to restore the monarchies around Europe. And then, I guess, I don't know, what are the Kaiser's motivations? I guess it would be that and... Basically, just getting tribute from the various monarchies. We're bringing them back. Bring them back and just take the cream off the top. Alright. Here's the German infantry on the east. Okay, so this army has six pieces of artillery. So that should be enough to outfire any enemy Russian opposition. As the first volley sounds out. Yeah, we haven't even really needed to advance in East Prussia too much. The Russians have just been hightailing it in. Now, we do have to be a little bit careful on this eastern side in our troop movements because once it hits winter here, it's incredibly harsh. Attrition is kind of insane in this game. So, there's a lot of key defensive areas, bridges, rivers, and points of interest on the Eastern Front. But it's the weather conditions that are going to really cost us here. So the plan is, we're Blitzkrieg in France. Once we take a lot of territory, we're going to be able to spend the rest of the war chest on the east. Like, we want to try and maintain our military upkeep and any units we lose on the west, but just at the moment, the German army, you start off with, like, uh, five, six full stacks, four of which is on... four to five of which, realistically, is on the west, while there's not too many on the east. So you do have to be quite careful and meticulous in your movement and your approach on the east if you're playing as Germany because the Russians just outnumber you so much they seem to be charging here with some cavalry looking for a brave Tsar cavalry charge what I'm hoping for as well is a civil war between the white Tsarist Russians and the Reds hopefully Mr. Lenin can show up soon I think the AI... Uh, I know you can obviously do that as the human player. If you... Oh, I can't even remember how you do it. Now, there's a way to cheese it and bring the Soviet Union into World War One really early on. Like at 1914. Something to do with a rebellion or letting the... Letting the rebels take your capital or something. That, that, that was something like that. I need to remember how to do it again. But I'm pretty sure the AI can have a civil war and have it happen to them. I could be wrong. I still don't even know if the, um... The Yanks show up. Which I'd hope so. 
Okay. So at the moment, we're just trading back and forth a little bit. Look at the map. Eight of our bunkered in German positions are getting shelled. But, ah, oh, this is dreadful. <laughs> Why have they done that? The first five battles of this series have actually been alright, but this one's been a bit suspect. Why have they done that? I only can think that the AI is calculating that they don't want to charge because they'll lose. They don't want to sit back, so they're just like clustering up here and they're stuck in a movement. If we can hit this, this would be insane. Just focus all the shelling in the center there. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, dude, if we had some, like, late game firepower. Boosh. Or, can you remember in Shogun 2, there's, like, the naval ability where you can, like, get shots off? Oh, dude, that was so insane. Yeah, kind of playing this makes me think I should play for all the samurai. That God, that's a good game. There's even mods in that as well that you can play as. Oh, we're getting hit here a bit with my cavalry. Oh my God, my cat. Oh my God. Yeah, I don't know if uh, cavalry is very good in this mod. To be fair, cavalry for me is not the best at the best of times. <laughs> I, I, I quite often lose a lot of cavalry casualties because I just use them. I send them in. I try to use them as best I can. Cavalry commanders do get slaughtered quite a bit on the channel. But yeah, like even in that, I think you can play as France and Britain. There's a mod for it. Not on Fall of the Samurai, straight up, but... Yeah, maybe I should go back to that. That'd be quite cool, though. If you have a navy nearby, you could get... Like... Artillery support in. From the ship. But at the moment, look at the balance of power. It's actually not in our favour for whatever reason. I am looking to try and wrap some... Cavalry in and around. But at the moment, I think my artillery is actually struggling a bit. I don't know what's going on. Maybe just the range. Maybe the angle of the battlefield slightly isn't conducive to high output of artillery strikes in this one. I don't know. Maybe I need to diversify up some of the firing patterns. To best use and utilize the arty. Hmm. I don't know. This is a tough one. I thought I'd be sort of progressing a bit better. But maybe it's just the Russians. Holding once again in stoic resilience. Oh my god. A cold people. Particularly on the battlefield. In this battle. Oh my god. I'm trying to advance with my cavalry and they're just getting minced. <laughs> like, look at that. They are... Oh, here we go. We might be able to get in here now. There we go. Oh no, we've got some Russians just getting their rifle fire off there. Yeah, they're gone. Oh my god. I'm actually going to lose the full division. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> Well, that was not the play. Yeah, like, I was kind of moving it around a bit. Got an artillery piece coming in. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I I'll just try with the cavalry, but I guess once we're out, we're out. <laughs> There's no point of putting too much money into it. Uh, I got an artillery piece coming in. Now it's swung into about 65, 70% in our favor. Maybe the engineers were drunk. <laughs> maybe they, maybe their firing arcs have all been messed up. What's 77 plus 33? Uh, 100. Wait, no, that's not it. We got the math wrong. <laughs> Glory 
glorious victory. And it like overshoots the, the shot. Oh my god. They're coming back in here now. So we did manage to, just looking at the debris and bodies there, we did manage to actually clip a fair few in that cluster. But, not as much as I would have liked. Alright, uh, I've made the decision to advance. To be fair, these guys are getting shredded a bit. We're not necessarily winning. But we're not losing either. As the Russians look to take Prussia in this offensive. Are we the baddies? I don't even know. Oh, they're actually trying to match us here. We actually might lose the infantry fight in this one. Let's form that up to make it a bit nicer. Oh, I thought they were a lot worse off. Okay. Oh, I might have made a mistake here. Because I've just got that French battle in my memory. No, they're, they're whittled enough. Okay, so the artillery has really freshened up the infantry. We've had to advance into the second phase of the fight. And it looks like in a rifle exchange, the Germans, under the reign of de Kaiser, I'm going to win this one out, I think. Alright. There we go. They're going to capitulate now. A heroic victory. Crikey. Oh my god, is that Odin? Couple cool looking backgrounds as well. They've really done well on the art aspect. And artillery getting the win again. And Prussia lives another day. Well, Eastern Prussia. Okay, so, got a bit of cash left. Time to go back into our industry a bit. We've also unlocked some techs to get just better quality um, food and infrastructure and buildings as well because now we're at a stage where we've got a little bit of cash money free to invest in the economy. So, we definitely want to do and capitalize on that at some point. Alright, well... Just trying to wind things down here. We're just going to try and run down the last of the Russian resistance here in East Prussia. And I would like to advance maybe to Lithuania and Latvia, but I don't know. We'll see how we go. We just need more forces here. But at the moment, we're taking out like a 1v1. If they're going to trickle 1v1, we can 1v1 any Russian that comes against us. We'll be fine. Just need to keep my reconnaissance plane flying around Minsk and... Lithuania, just to give some line of sight and give us a bit of warning not to overextend if the Russians are coming. And we've still got to focus on the Western Front. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed today's episode. A little bit of a grind. It was a hard fought battle for Reims and obviously in the East as well. Uh, no territorial trading just yet. Austria not doing too bad. Yeah, the Ottomans aren't even that big. So maybe they'd be a, a pretty difficult and tricky campaign. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for episode 3 coming out tomorrow. Having an absolute blast of this Germany campaign. And I hope you guys are as well. So support it. And I'll do more of the Great War mod on the channel. Unfortunately, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Check out my social media links in the description below if you want to stay connected with me. I also want to say thank you to this month's patrons and channel members. Victor K, Sebastian C, Jordan K, Caesar L, Brian S, Tao, Lion B, Kyle P, Tom C and White P. My name has been Simsy. Much love from Australia. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>